Hi everyone, welcome to this video on determining the reaction stoichiometry lab. In this lab, our goal is to find the stoichiometric coefficients in reactions where two species combine to form one. To do this, we'll need to use a new technique called absorption spectroscopy. So let's start with a discussion of the concept. As we learned in class, when we have a chemical equation, we must balance it, which means assigning the correct stoichiometric coefficients on each species as shown here. We can assign coefficients easily because we know the chemical formula of both the reactants and the products. However, there are specific reactions where we don't know the actual formula of the product. These are reactions where two species combine into one. Several examples are given here, but the one that we will focus on is the complex ion formation reaction. To determine the coefficients when we don't know the chemical formula of the product, we use a method called continuous variation. The idea is the following. We will mix the two reactants at varying ratios, but keep the total quantity of both reactants constant. When we find the ratio of reactants that give the most amount of product, that ratio is also the ratio of the stoichiometric coefficients of the two reactants. Let's show how this works in an example. Let's say we have a reaction with the following stoichiometry. 2A plus B goes to A2B. Here we will mix various number of moles of A and B together, but we will keep the total number of moles to four moles. What I will show you is that we will get the most product when we mix a ratio of two moles of A to one mole of B. Okay, let's see how this works. The table here shows various ratios of A to B with the total kept at four moles. So for example, you can mix half a mole of A and three and a half moles of B, or you can mix 1.25 moles of A and 2.75 moles of B. All of these numbers will add up to four. Now, what we will do is calculate the number of moles of product, which is A to B, that's formed for each mixture. To calculate the product, we're going to need to find the limiting reactant in each case. Recall that we can find the limiting reactant using the following method described here. We take the number of moles of each reactant and then divide it by its coefficient. So A by two and B by one. This gives us the number of reactions that we can carry out if we use up that specific reactant. And then whichever reactant gives us the smallest number of reactions, that's our limiting reactant. So let me illustrate this for you. For the first mixture, we're using half a mole of A and three and a half moles of B. We divide 0.5 by two, since that's the coefficient of A, and we divide B by one, so we get these numbers right here. The reactant that gives us the smaller number is the limiting reactant, so in this case, A will be the limiting reactant. Once we figure out that A is the limiting reactant, we can use that information to calculate the number of moles of product that we're going to make. So in this case, we get 0.25 moles A to B. Now we can repeat this process for all the other ratios of A and B, and then calculate the number of moles of A to B that's produced. Notice the pattern that as the limiting reactant quantity is increased, the number of moles of products also increased, and that makes sense. At some point though, the limiting reactant changes from A to B as you keep increasing the number of moles of A. And as the quantity of limiting reactant, in this case B, decreases, the product also decreases. So this pattern means that if we plot the quantity of product as a function of one of the reactants, we will see a line that increases, reaches a maximum, and then decreases, as shown here. Now, in the actual table of data, we see that the most product is obtained when we mix 2.75 moles of A and 1.25 moles of B. That's highlighted here in yellow. That's the highest number of all the numbers you have here. Now, if we reduce the ratio of 2.75 to 1.25, we get 2.2 to 1. As you see, this is close enough to the actual ratio of the coefficient of A to B, which is two to one, right? So even from this data, you can see that the ratio that gives us the most product is the ratio that is exactly the correct stoichiometric ratio between A and B, which is two to one. Now, the question is, why didn't we exactly get two to one? Why did we get 2.2 to one? Now, the reason is because the data that we collect is not complete. Here, what we did is we vary the quantity by half a mole as we go from one one row to the next row. And that increase is too large to capture the exact point when the ratio of the two reactants matches the stoichiometric
stoichiometric ratio. Now we can, however, find that exact point if we plot the data instead of looking at it numerically. So here's a plot of exactly the data that we just gathered. The y-axis here is the number of moles of the product, and the x-axis is the number of moles of A. As we said earlier, there are two parts to the data. One is when A is the limiting reactant. This is the part of the graph that's increasing. Then we have the part when B is the limiting reactant. We can see that that's the part that's decreasing. So each data has been fitted with a line, and the equation of the lines is shown here. Our goal is to find the highest point, which satisfies both equations. So in this case, we have to find the intersection point of these two lines. So if we solve for the intersection point of the two lines, we find that the x variable is equal to 2.667 moles. And that's the number of moles of A that gives us the most product. Now you see why we didn't get this number in our data, because we increased by half a mole. So we skipped that number. Now, now that we find that 2.667 moles of A produce the most product, we can also use that information to find the number of moles of B, which is just 4 moles minus 2.667, giving us 1.333 moles of B. So now we can reduce the ratio of A to B, which is 2.667 to 1.333, and that reduces exactly down to 2 to 1, which is the correct ratio for our reaction in this case. All right, so let's take a look at an actual reaction. In an actual reaction, we don't know the coefficients of A and B. So what can we do to determine the coefficients? Well, first, we'll collect the data, just like we did in the example that I just showed you. We're going to mix various ratios of A and B, but keeping the total constant. So let's say you have the data that's shown here. We're going to then plot that data uh, of the moles of product, which we can measure, and we'll talk about how to measure these numbers later, as a function of the moles of A. The plot is shown right here for this data. We then use the fitted line equation, which is also given here from Excel, and we're trying to solve here for the number of moles of A that gives us the maximum amount of product. If we do this for these two plots right here, we get x equals 0.984 moles of A, which then means we can find the number of moles of B by subtracting that number from 4 moles, which is the total, to give us 3.015 moles of B. And then the last step is to convert the ratio of A and B to a whole number, and that ends up giving us 1 mole of A to 3.06 moles of B, which rounds to 3. So then in this particular data set, the stoichiometric ratio between A and B is 1 of A to 3 of B. Okay, So that's the method of continuous variations, which we will use in this case to help us figure out the stoichiometric ratio of our reaction today.